here now we're going to talk about the dimension of education technology and there are some studies that were done by other scientists or other uh, psychologists like David in 1995 and Plump and Pose in 1989. These now they came up with the, the categories or the dimensions of education technology and one of them is education technology ET1 and in this Education Technology 81, basically we were looking at the use of instructional materials for all categories to facilitate teaching and learning. And what are these instructional materials, students? What comes in your mind when you talk about instruction materials? Okay, so in this course, instruction materials, basically we are talking about the materials that are well packaged for a specific subject matter which, in which the student will follow instructions step by step. It's instructions that have been laid down with the subject matter. So this one, in this case, it is So this study was done by Afolabi in, in 2008. He's the one now who produced his results and said, this is an approach to teaching and learning. Of course, in this course, as students, or as for this course, we are going to adopt the, the, star, the results or the definition that has been, or the concept that has been derived from this study that was done. And it's very, very important. If you are not clear, please, I can still go back and explain things in detail. So we go to the second dimension. The second dimension, basically, we are talking about education technology, ET1, ET2. We are coming from ET1, now we're coming to ET2. This basically is a, we're talking about all the strategies, techniques, and means through which instructions are designed. So if there are instructions that are designed, you know, they are designed, planned, implemented, and they are evaluated at the end of the day. So this you know, it does not exclude the integration of the laws and the theories that are found in the field of education. We see that in the education sector, we have learning theories, we have quite many theories, and those theories and laws, okay, and rules are not excluded from this dimension, okay. So for proper integration and utilization of media for better results, we want to produce better results. So you, as a student, it's key to understand what this is all about. So education technology, ET, ET2, it refers. So in this course, please, when I say education technology, ET2, can you explain? You should be able to define it and explain that it refers to all strategies, techniques, and means through which instructions are designed and are planned okay implemented and evaluated so so this aspect of education technology basically is attributed to philosophical and holistic orientation okay when we talk about philosophy what does it mean philosophy meaning that the man start to believe of existence of certain functions of the society holistic basically you are looking at at a broader level Okay, you are looking, it's a broader term, it's at a broader level. So based on the concept of, this is based on the problem analysis, okay, and goal achievement. What is a problem analysis? What is a problem analysis? In this course, it's very, very important to know what is problem analysis. Problem analysis um, talks about identifying the problem, one. What are the root cause of the problem? and who are the causes of the problem and so that is analysis and uh, when we go further we talk about a problem analysis we talk about three problem analysis where you look at all the spheres or the branches of the particular uh, subject and what are the goals that are, have been set forth further to this course or to this subject that we have been talking about. I 
I know some of you now you are being di you are digesting what I've been taking telling you about. Let's go further to the education technology three ET three. So this aspect basically looks at the putting man and machine efforts together to improve the quality of instruction or of education. Okay, man is there, and there are machines. Today we are in this world today. We are human beings, but we are using also machines. So when we are together, human being and the, and the machines, then we try to improve the education. Or we want to, to try to improve the instructions. How do we teach? How do we deliver the lecture to you students? How do we deliver? So all that, you, you know, there are so many techniques. You remember, uh, for, with the current situation, you know that uh, there's what you call artificial intelligence. Okay, this is where man, who, the machines will be used, but using the cells or the brain cells of human beings. So we see that as we moving further in technology, we are seeing more of machines working apart from man. Today we have uh, platforms, people where they share information, where man and, and machines interact. Most of the time we interact with machines. He, right now we are interacting with machines. When you are with your phone there, with your smartphone, you are interacting with the man and the, and the machine that is working together to provide the information, to provide the training. Okay? ET3, it has got its roots on education system theories. The theories that we talked about, remember that the education theories, those, this is where the roots are. That is where the background, that is where we draw most of these theories. So this aspect basically, it attempts to put man and improving the quality there. This has led to popular, you know, uh, concept. And this is what we now has brought uh, uh, the concept called systems approach. The systems approach is where man and the machine work together. Then we uh, scientists develop the systems on how we can develop uh, the instructions. Well, how do we design the, the instructions for the learners and for the teaching? For, for us to be able to improve that quality education. So the systems approach, in the later uh, units or in the later chapters of the, of the course, we shall talk about the systems approach in detail as one of the units on each one. So in summary, or in conclusion, as we are winding up, it's very, very key students to be able to know one, what is education technology? What does it mean? What are the two components that constitute education technology? And going further, discussing the different theories that are embedded in the course, that are embedded in education technology. There are theories related to education. Students who should be able to define what is education uh, what is technology in education and technology of education, these two components. And further, and must understand the theories behind education. And then students should be able, uh, summary now with that instruction that I've given you and what I've explained, I think the more materials, when you read more, you have more understanding of things. So we must understand the dimensions of education technology. We talked about it, education technology ET1, education technology ET2, education technology ET3. So we talked up about them and how they differ in relation to education technology. So students, as I'm winding up this lecture, uh, you are most welcome. But what I emphasize is that please take keen interest on the terms and concepts in this, you must understand the meaning of education technology and the dimensions and the types, the components of this. So examples of media, I talked about aspect of technology where efforts are being made, you know, trying to improve the quality of education. So I, I end here, but students, you are most welcome. Please, I encourage you students to read more 
their references to read more, study more, get more materials to understand the course. What we are just doing here is just like a, a briefing, just introduction. But the key things is you need to go deeper, understand the different concepts for you to be more understanding and educated. Thank you very much for this.